Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, this one titled Infinite Suck, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It's an infinite damage combo deck centered around Famished Paladin and Sorcerer's Wand. The Famished Paladin, a 2 mana 3 3 Vampire Knight that doesn't untap during your untap step, but whenever you gain life, you can untap the Famished Paladin. And then we also have Sorcerer's Wand, an equipment that you typically want to pair with Wizards, but we're making an exception here, as the equipped creature has tap, and this creature deals one damage to target player or planeswalker. Now, just having these two cards is not enough to deal infinite damage, since we'll only get to tap our Paladin once, and then it's going to be stuck being tapped. But if we can give our Paladin lifelink somehow, then whenever it deals damage with the Sorcerer's Wand, it will be dealing a lifelink damage, meaning we also gain one life for each damage we deal, which will untap our Famished Paladin, and then we can just keep tapping it over and over again until we deal infinite damage and kill our opponent, also gaining infinite life in the process. And we have a few ways of giving our Paladin lifelink in this deck. We have two copies of Shadow Spear, giving it plus one plus one, a lifelink and trample. We have four copies of Blacklands Paragon, which we can flash in, giving a Knight we control Death Touch and Lifelink until end of turn. And we also have the full playset of Soren, Vengeful Bloodlord, which gives all our creatures Lifelink during our turn. So that's the three card combo we're trying to assemble, but the beauty of this deck is that we can also just play out like a normal Knight Tribal deck, and can definitely win games without the infinite damage combo. The only card that's really bad by itself I would say is a Sorcerer's Wand, and then another card that ties the deck together nicely is the Acclaimed Contender from Throne of Eldraine, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three human knight, that when it enters the battlefield, if we control another knight, we can look at the top 5 cards of our library, reveal a knight, aura, equipment or legendary artifact from among them and put it into our hand. So the Acclaimed Contender can find every single non-land card in the deck except for Sword and Vengeful Bloodlord, so it can also help us assemble the combo while also just being a good value card by itself. So let's take a look at our entire deck, starting out with our one drops, where we have the full playset of Knight of the Ebon Legion, incredibly powerful card by itself as it can grow over time, and the threat of activation also makes it very difficult to block. Then we've got two copies of Shadow Spear, which is still a totally fine card, even without the infinite damage combo, giving plus one plus one trample and lifelink. Can also come up that you can remove indestructible from a Heliod. Then we've got our four copies of Sorcerer's Wand, not an incredible card without the infinite damage combo, but can maybe help you take out a Planeswalker that's low on loyalty. Then we've got our four copies of Famished Paladin. Now we do want to make sure we keep the Paladin untapped at all times, otherwise we risk running into a situation where the lifelinking combo piece is a Paragon or a Shadow Spear, and then even if we have the Sorcerer's Wand but the uh, Paladin is tapped, we won't be able to combo off since we need that first Sorcerer's Wand activation with a lifelinking uh, Paladin to keep comboing. Of course if our engine is Sorin instead of the Shadow Spear or the Paragon it doesn't matter since we can just use Sorin's plus two to untap the Paladin and then we can keep comboing. But if we have a Paragon or a Shadow Spear we need to make sure the Paladin is untapped. Then we've got our full playset of Black Lance Paragon which is also just a fine card by itself. Two copies of Smitten Swordmaster, which is kind of in the flex slot, could play a number of other cards, like the Falmar Knight, to maybe draw some more cards, but I wanted to keep the curve low, and have more ways of potentially untapping the Paladin, in case it ends up being tapped, and here we can use Curry Favor, where we get to gain X life, and each opponent loses X life, where X is the number of knights we control, and then we also get a 2 mana to 1 lifelink, an extra knight to put in play, to make sure that when we play the acclaimed contender, we'll have a knight in play, so we can uh, look at the top 5 for one of our combo pieces. And then we've got our full playset of Midnight Reaper as well. Whenever a non-token creature we control dies, the Reaper deals one damage to us and we draw a card. So another nice draw engine if the opponent tries to kill our Famished Paladin. So we can potentially draw into another one, or maybe a Soren to get it back from the graveyard. And then to have a little bit of interaction, we also have the full playset of Murderous Rider, which can destroy creatures or planeswalkers with the Swift End Adventure. And then afterwards we still get a 2-3 lifelinking knight that can also potentially help us untap the Famished Paladin. And then last but not least is the full playset of Soren Vengeful Bloodlord, which is also great in this deck, as it will not only give our creatures lifelink during our turn, which helps us with the combo, but the minus X can also return a creature from our graveyard back to the battlefield, so it can potentially return a Famished Paladin that uh, died earlier to help us combo as well. And then the mana base is pretty straightforward, two copies of Castle Lochthwain, which can also help us draw more cards, and with all the life gain from Soren and from Shadow Spear, we can kind of offset the life loss from the castle, and then we have five planes, seven swamps, four godless shrine, four chapel, and two copies of Temple of Silence 
to round out the deck. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with uh, a reasonable hand. Don't have a ton of our combo pieces, but uh, Knight of Abel Legion can definitely win a game where we don't combo. And then we've got some interaction with the Murder Strider. Could be up against the Mono Red deck. I think I still play the second knight before I play the Famish Paladin here. Because then if I end up uh, pumping the knight next turn, I'll get to grow both. Against two red mana, I don't know if we want to play around a Lightning Strike. So I think I'm just going to attack and then play Midnight Reaper. Also, it didn't appear like they had instant speed removal in hand. But now if there's some sort of sweeper, we get to draw some cards at least. Alright, Chain Whirler. Not quite good enough. And I don't mind killing it with Murder Strider. Might want to hold it in case they have a Torbran, because then Torbran into another Chain Whirler would be bad. And given their slow start, they might have Torbran. But then again, killing a 3-3 first strike is not bad either. Like, we weren't necessarily forced to use the Murder Strider there, since I could just attack with the two knights and pump the one they block. But that also takes up uh, our entire turn. Alright, Fires of Invention into another Chain Whirler. So opponent's going a little bit bigger than the typical red decks. I guess we can uh, make the play where we attack with the two knights. Ilharg the Race Boar, alright. So there might be a Drunkoseth somewhere in our future. And we did draw the wand, so we do have the combo pieces. Although if they do put Drunkoseth in play with Ilharg, it's not going to trigger. So they won't get to destroy my creatures. All that being said, probably just attack with all. And then play the Paragon. To give Death Touch to whatever they block. And then I can still play a Paladin afterwards. I think that beats pumping. And with Fires of Invention in play, we don't need to fear our opponent playing instant speed removal here. So I won't have enough mana to necessarily pull off the infinite damage combo next turn, since we need 3 to equip and 4 for Sorin. But I guess if we draw on our Paragon, we could get there. Although, if they don't have a Sweeper, they're also just dead to the board here. Cavalier of Flame. Can it find some answers? Opponent can cast one more spell. Alright, another Ilharg. They can give Ilharg hastes, and maybe put something else scary into play. We're at 17, yeah, it's not inconceivable that they can kill us here. But we can block to prevent quite a bit of damage. And yeah, opponent comes to the conclusion that they're dead. Alright, close to the combo, but we just won a fair game with Knight of Ebon Legion. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Yeah, this hand seems fine. All we're missing is the Famish Paladin, but we do have a contender to maybe help dig for it. Opponent with a Leyline of Abundance into Lenor Elves. And there's a Paladin. Wow, the earliest we can combo is turn 4, and as long as we keep hitting our land drops, we might be able to pull it off here. So turn 2 Paladin, turn 3 Equip, and then turn 4... I guess we don't even need a land, we can just play Paragon and combo. And if they're playing some sort of ramp deck, they're not gonna have a ton of interaction. 
So we might be able to just combo them on turn 4. Thunder shoot rides, alright, not bad. Well, time to equip our paladin. I guess I'll play the castle. If they do have removal, we have a backup, but then we might end up being a little bit too slow. We'll see. Six mana for a finale of glory, x equals four. All right, it's a pretty impressive board state our opponent has here. Take three. All right, it looks like uh, we get to combo here. Play Paragon. Give lifelink. And yeah, opponent sees a writing on the wall. And in terms of how quickly we can combo, it's not too bad. Compared to some other infinite combos, it goes pretty fast. Alright, and thanks to our opponent for letting us demonstrate the combo here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. All we're missing is a Sorcerer's Wand to combo off, but uh, even without it, we've got a fine curve. Do I need more lands? Some fine playing Temple. Swordmaster is interesting. It's okay, but not amazing. I guess at this point, I'll just take any creature to go with my Midnight Reaper. They could have a Thought Erasure next turn, take away the Reaper or the Sorin. I guess taking Sorin maybe makes more sense, because otherwise Sorin can just get back Reaper from the graveyard. Either way, um, guess we'll play the Paladin for now. Can untap it using Curry Favor or Sorin. Seem to be up against Grixis Control. So this is going to be a tough matchup, since they're going to have plenty of interaction for our various combo pieces. If they have an answer for Soren lined up, they might still take the Midnight Reaper to throw off our curve. But then if they take the Reaper next turn, I can just attack for three curry favor and play the Swordmaster. So they do take the Soren, in which case I'll probably just play the Midnight Reaper. And then I can still attack for three and then maybe next turn curry favor before attacking. Drawing another Soren's nice. So at least now if they have a sweeper, we get to draw some cards. Opponent passes with three mana, could be a counter spell. Which I could bait out with our adventure, or I could slam Soren plus and then still attack. I think I'm okay using this for now. Even though there's a risk of them having another Thought Erasure next turn. We're gonna see end of turn bounce Midnight Reaper into maybe a Sweeper on their turn. There's a Ritual of Sits, alright. So I do get to resolve whatever I want now. Between Surin and Midnight Reaper, I guess I can go Reaper plus Paragon, which isn't bad. 
Yeah, let's go with uh, that line, which is a bit more mana-efficient. And then technically, if they have nothing, I could attack for six and finish them off with uh, Surin. Although that's probably not happening. Ascanta can transform this turn, so they will have one more mana. But once the game goes late, it's going to be difficult to beat an active Ascanta the Sunken Rune. Thought Erasure is going to kind of force the issue on the Paragon. Which they might counter. And that's going to leave us with just a Midnight Reaper. Paragon resolves. Surin is gone. And there we see the Sabotage, which is... Who knows what uh, they could have in hand here. Right, cast down the Reaper. At least replaces itself. And got a backup. Alright. Now do I want to play this Knight of Avon Legion? I think I do. Worst case is another Ritual of Soot, but then I get to draw three. And if they have a single removal spell for the Reaper, I still want to present lethal. Alright, do they have another Sweeper? If they don't, alright, awesome. Yeah, pretty tough matchup, but we were lucky to draw all these Midnight Reapers and Sorens, which are exactly what we want in this type of matchup. Acclaimed Contender, another very good one. And uh, luckily didn't draw any Sorcerer's Wands. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and so yeah, we've got all three combo pieces. We're a bit light on mana, but the temple can help us find another land. Although it does mean I wouldn't get to play the wand on turn one. So it's not perfect, but might still be able to combo on turn five instead of turn four. A wild growth walker. That's acceptable. So we'll just uh, play the wand, play Knight of Emma Legion. Next turn I can equip, and then the turn after we're good to go. And don't really mind if they gain a bunch of life with the wild growth walker. Alright, so runs another way of gaining a lifelink. Could attack with Knight of Evil Legion, but don't really want to have to spend three mana pumping it in case they block. Alright, let's see if they have interaction. Blue-green could have some bounce spells. Alright, it's going to be a Nissa. Well, they better have a bounce spell after they untap their breeding pool here. They're going to untap Temple instead. The land fights for us. Yeah, seems to me like they're dead. Alright, sweet. So yeah, 
whenever we're up against decks without a lot of interaction, that's where drawing the combo really shines. Against the more interactive decks, we prefer drawing the other half of our deck. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand's not exciting, we only have the wand as a combo piece, and our fair game plan is just playing a bunch of two drops, so I think we can do better. Alright, this is better. We've got a contender and a wand, so we're just missing the paladin for the combo, but at least contender and reaper give us a nice uh, fair game plan as well. Now the land situation is a little awkward, both come into play tapped, so that's definitely a potential issue. And then it's unclear what I do with these Paragons, since I want to play a Paragon on turn 2 so we can Contender on 3 potentially to uh, find a card, but then I won't have my Lifelink uh, card anymore. So I might bottom the Reaper, or I might bottom the Paragon with the idea that we play Reaper and then Contender and then wait on the Paragon. I think I'm gonna bottom the Reaper here instead to be able to play the Contender sooner. If we're up against a more controlling deck, then I'll miss the Reaper. If we're up against a more combo deck, then uh, we want to be able to assemble the combo as fast as possible. And then the Paragon's gonna help us a little bit more. Did find a Godless Shrine, which is a nice land to draw here. So it looks like a blue-black reanimator deck, as we see Thassa, probably paired with Agent of Treachery, Blood for Bones. So yeah, this is definitely a matchup where we need to try and combo as soon as possible. So glad I kept a Paragon over the Midnight Reaper. Luckily no Agent of Treachery in the graveyard yet, but that could change. Kaya's Ghost Form. That's fine. Take three. And end of turn, we'll play the Paragon. I drew another Reaper anyways. I think I attack and then play Contender. And there's our Famished Paladin, so yeah. It's gonna be a couple turns before we set everything up, but we technically have all the pieces. So question is, can our opponents reanimate an Agent of Treachery or something else scary before that? This could be Blood for Bones, get back Thassa. And then they can start flickering their uh, Mire Tritons or Stitcher Suppliers to put more stuff in the graveyard. Don't really want a Block Supplier. Right, opponent passes with 4 mana up. I'm just gonna play the Paladin, I think. It's also unclear whether I want to be attacking or playing defense. If they end up killing my Paladin, then I think I do want to start applying a bit of pressure with my other creatures. And taking three is still reasonable. So I'll start by attacking. And we already have land five at ready, so next turn we can equip the wand, play the Paragon and combo off. Opponent maybe trying to piece together what we're trying to accomplish with the Sorcerer's Wand. And we already have a Black Lands Paragon in place, so they know that they could die next turn if we have Land Paragon. It's gonna be Blood for Bones sacking Stitcher Supplier, hoping that they can mill over something spicy. But they did not get there. No Agent of Treachery. So the best they can do is probably Thassa. So, we'll untap, equip. And there we go.
Alright, sweet. So we were able to dodge an agent of treachery and pull off our combo onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we technically have all the combo pieces in hand here. So I'll keep. Now I don't have any redundancy for the Paladin, which could be an issue if they kill it. But gotta try. And then turn 1, it's actually interesting. If I play the Temple, then I can't set up a turn 4 win. Because for that I need to Sorcerer's Wand in play. But I do want to make sure I keep hitting my land drops. You know what, I, I think I actually still prefer playing the Wands. And then next turn I can play Temple, play Shadow Spear. And take it from there. But if we do naturally draw the lands, then we give ourselves a chance of still uh, comboing as early as possible. So... The earliest we can combo now is turn 5, but we are up against a black-white deck, so there could be plenty of removal waiting for us. Probably still play the Paladin, although... Could also go for an end of turn Paragon if we want to play around some instant speed removal here. Which they do seem to have. Cast down. So if we knew for a fact they had it in hand, going for end of turn Blacklands Paragon would have been better. But we do have a backup Paladin at least. Heliot Sun Crowns. So some sort of black white life gain control deck. More Paladins. I guess I'll keep running them out. And hope they eventually run out of answers. And then we'll still need a third land to equip Sorcerer's Wand. Knight of Abel Legion. Another Knight of Abel Legion. So, yeah. Could just equip Sorcerer's Wands. Shadow Spear is 2 mana to equip, so that also takes up my entire turn. So might as well go for the Wands. Let's make them have it. The downside is that we have a Shadow Spear in play. If they didn't see the Shadow Spear, they would maybe ignore the Paladin for a turn, and then we could get them with the Paragon. Alright, Knight gains lifelink. Sure. Alright, well, they're just dead on board now. Just gotta make sure we don't uh, tap the Paladin end of turn. Equip Shadow Spear. And the funny thing is, Shadow Spear is also pretty good against Heliot since it can remove the uh, indestructible. And our opponent sees it riding on the wall. So yeah, we were able to combo many times as early as turn 4. The built-in redundancy from the lifelink uh, pieces definitely helps the deck out quite a bit and then Acclaimed Contender also improves the consistency of assembling the combo, but we were also able to win some games where we never really were close to assembling the combo and just won by beating down with knights and drawing some cards with uh, Midnight Reaper. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.